Well, here I am again at Promised Land Bucks and Ducks, and this is uh, the property that God provided for ministry purposes for my husband to minister to parents and children. And it's a gorgeous morning, and I'm going to continue the vlog series about afflictions. Last week, I focused on Psalm 119.67 that teaches us that affliction draws us to God. So today we're going to learn how afflictions teach us God's law. And this is in verse 71 of the same chapter, 119 of Psalm. And I'm going to again use the three translations that I used last time, beginning with the Amplified. Psalm 119, 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The Living Bible says, The punishment you gave me was the best thing that could have happened to me, for it taught me to pay attention to your laws. And the easy-to-read version says, Suffering was good for me. I learned your laws. So there are those three different terms again, affliction, punishment, and suffering. Now, have you ever heard the phrase, Dad laid down the law? Well, that usually happens when a child breaks Dad's rules, and Dad has to mete out some sort of discipline to reinforce and teach his rules. Well, God has rules, too. They're called by different names in the Bible. Laws, statutes, ways, promises, testimonies, His Word, precepts. A lot of different terms that mean God's rules, His laws. So I want to go into His Word, and I want to look at the example that David is believed to be referencing in Psalm 119.71. This punishment, this affliction, this suffering that he's referring to is in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 9-24. through 24. And this is in the NIV version. And again, it's 2 Samuel 12, verses 9 through 24. This is Nathan the prophet speaking to David. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. This is what the Lord says, Out of your own household I am going to bring calamity on you. Before your very eyes I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you, and he will sleep with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, The Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. But because by doing this you have sh shown utter contempt for the Lord, the son born to you will die. After Nathan had gone home, the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had borne to David, and he became ill. David pleaded with God for the child. He fasted and spent the nights lying in sackcloth on the ground. The elders of his household stood beside him to get him up from the ground, but he refused and he would not eat any food with them. On the seventh day, the child died. David's attendants were afraid to tell him that the child was dead, for they thought, while the child was still living, he wouldn't listen to us when we spoke to him. How can we now tell him the child is dead? He may do something desperate. David noticed that his attendants were whispering among themselves, and he realized the child was dead. Is the child dead? he asked. Yes. They replied, He is dead. Then David got up from the ground. After he had washed, put on lotions, and changed his clothes, he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he went to his own house, and at his request they served him food, and he ate. His attendants asked him, Why are you acting this way? While the child was alive, you fasted and wept. But now that the child is dead, you get up and eat. He answered, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. I thought, Who knows? The Lord may be gracious to me and let the child live. But now that he is dead, why should I go on fasting? Can I bring him back again? 
I will go to him, but he will not return to me. Then David comforted his wife Bathsheba, and he went to her and made love to her. She gave birth to a son, and they named him Solomon. So to help you understand the story a little bit, the background is that Bathsheba was married to Uriah the Hittite, one of David's soldiers. David was the king, and he saw Bathsheba one night, and he lusted after her, brought her to his palace, made love to her, she became pregnant. When he became aware of her pregnancy, he wanted to cover his sin, because see, he had disobeyed God's law. Thou shall not commit adultery. And that's exactly what he had done. And he wanted to cover his sin. So he brought Uriah the Hittite back from war and tried to lure him, I think it was three times, to go and sleep with his wife. But he would not because he was righteous. And he stayed at the city's gates with the other soldiers that were there. And he slept there. He refused to go and do something that he was not allowed to do while he was at war. He followed the law, the rules. But David could not get him to help him cover his sin, so David sent him back to war and had him put on the front line so that he would be killed, and he was. Then he took Bathsheba to be his wife, all the while still hoping that uh, it would look like that uh, his sin was covered up. But it wasn't, because in the Word, Nathan quickly told him, he said, why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You know, my affliction, in the last vlog I was telling you, and I have many times uh, in this ministry of living hope, my affliction of depression taught me to rely on God and his word, his law, instead of relying on myself. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that's exactly what the Word, the law, tells us to do. To trust in God, not ourselves. But I disobeyed that. It also taught me to promise that God will never leave me or forsake me. In Hebrews 13, 5, it's just one place in the Bible of many that gives us that promise that He will never leave us or forsake us. Affliction teaches us God's law, and we can then teach it to others by our word and by our life's example. That's what David did. You know, in the book of Psalms, he wrote that and he confessed what he had done. But wasn't the Lord gracious to him? He did allow him to have another son. And it says that God loved his son Solomon. Isn't that great? So, he wants it to pour into us and out of us again to others. And that's exactly what Living Hope is about, that I try to always teach the mental and physical and spiritual healing truths that the Lord taught me through depression. So afflictions teach us God's law. When I went through my depression, I stayed in the Word, and I have been in the Word even more since then, and in a deeper level, and trying to always allow it to... Um, correct me and to guide me and lead me and teach me because it's the best. Doing life God's way, the way he gives us in his word, is the best. So, I hope that this today speaks a word of hope into your life, that if you are suffering any kind of affliction, suffering, punishment, that it will teach you God's law. And that will be one of the benefits that comes from affliction. So this is the second portion of teaching on afflictions. Next time we'll get to the third and final one. I hope that this has been um, a good word for you today. Meditate on it. Go into the word yourself. Read these verses again. Let the Lord speak to you as you read them. Listen to what Holy Spirit has to say. Bless you all much.